Hi, this is Mei Vu of HotLifeHotLove.com. Have you ever had the call to go deep into the jungle, to explore the Amazon? Well, I had that call this year, and I knew exactly what I wanted to experience. I wanted to be on the Amazon River, I wanted to experience ayahuasca medicine, and I wanted to see Machu Picchu. So I joined a group led by my friend Kimberly Sherry, and we flew into Lima and then up to Iquitos where the Amazon River begins. And from there, we took a six-hour boat ride to Casa Shipibo, which is where the shaman and his family live and do the work to, pro to provide the ayahuasca experience for us. So here we are, the eight amigos from America, for 15 days, we were submerged into this jungle and to learn how to take this medicine and to go on journeys to expand our consciousness. And this is a picture of the river and the boat that we rode in on. We saw amazing sight like this one where, you know, the river has raised so high that it flooded the house. I've always wondered, where do people go when this happens? And since it was a six-hour ride on the boat, we got clever, and we did our own version of the Titanic, you know, that scene at the front of the ship. So here we are with Alexis and Keith, and even Huni, our, sh our shaman. This is the first picture and first time that he came out and played with us. One of the things that was so magnificent about being on this river is the tree lines and the reflection in the water. As you can see, it's stunning. The clouds, the blue sky, and the trees, and a perfect reflection. And we discover that if you take the picture and turn it vertical, you could actually see faces in them. Isn't that cool? When we arrived on the first day, we didn't make it until 8 or 9 o'clock at night. It was pitch black. It was incredible to see how they navigate through that river with just their senses. There's no street light. There's no um, street sign. And they just knew when to turn right, when to turn left, to take these amazing shortcuts that you can't even see in daylight, let alone maneuver in pitch dark environment. It really told me how much, how connected they are to their land, to their river, to their whole environment. And speaking of the environment, this is the casita, one of the casitas that we stayed at. It's very sparse, minimum, you had a bed and a mosquito net. And if you're lucky, you might have a table. If not, you didn't need one. And this is the little place where they set up the pot to make the the medicines plants. So they would go out to the jungle and chop down whatever plant or tree or bark or leaves that, that it takes to create the medicine. And the medicine could be as varied and can cure as much as cancer, diabetes, blood disorder, uh, intestinal disorder, anything. It's amazing how much the Amazon jungle provide for us humans that we didn't know about. And the shamans, they, because of their deep spiritual work and their connection to the land, and also through the ayahuasca medicine that they take regularly, the, the inside the medicine, they get these vision of what to do and what kind of plants and where to find them and how to prepare them so that they can create medicines for their people and for us now, the Westerners. And this last picture down here are the two toilets of, for the whole tribe. And this is the kitchen, uh, one of the kitchen. This is very sparse, and what can I say? You can see the, the simplicity of this. And I thought this was very ingenious. They built um, 
a container, a box, a wooden box, and then they fill it up with dirt. And this is inside one of those casitas. And they live and they cook and they sleep all around this hearth. And it serves as both a place to cook food and to keep them warm. And this is the, the temple that we gather around and we did all of our ceremonies in this temple. And here are some examples of the plants that was chopped and how, how they would prepare them. Some plant, they would scrape the outside and use the outside. Others, they throw away the outside and they keep the inside and so on and so forth. It's just amazing the combination of that. In the jungle, they... Uh, the, the shamans are very careful about protecting. So everything, before we do anything, there's always a ceremony to clean, to protect, and to set intention. And this is a very interesting ceremony where he would smoke this substance like a, a cigar, and it would blow this big bloom of white smoke onto people's head. And with some people's head, it just dissipates right away, and others, it stays on like it does for this woman here. And Keith and I got our own ceremony to bless our union. And this is the shaman's wife, and she served by capturing these experience and put them into these beautiful tapestry that she hand sewn and hand decorate and it's beautiful as you can see this is the ayahuasca plant with the leaves and the vine to honor the ayahuasca and this one is with the picture of a shaman preparing the medicine and the person in the center represents us, the seeker, the shaman, which sent all of his intention and his desire for healing and wishes into the medicine. We drink the medicine, and then those wiggly lines right there, it represents the Ikaro song that they sing to help us journey, to help us take off into the, the higher consciousness. The snake represents protection for the seeker and the puma represent protection for the shaman. This is to, uh, an evening event from usually a ceremony lasts from 8 to about 12 o'clock at night or 2 o'clock in the morning and the shaman sits in the middle, the medicines are there, They and each, each one of us has our own place on the outside and they would go one by one dispersing a cup of tea for us to drink and that these buckets here are for to catch your vomit when when the ayahuasca finish working through your body and it's ready to leave it will purge your system and you need a bucket never leave home without a bucket this is my other favorite part about being here are the children. They are beautiful, brilliant, smart, clever. They didn't know English, but they wanted to learn. The unfortunate part about them is that they have a beautiful school that was built, but because they live out way out in the jungle, they can't find a teacher that would like to live in this lifestyle to teach them. So they're left uh, without an education and they're hoping that there will be a teacher that appears soon. This is the, the clan that took care of us. You have dishwasher, you have cook, you have women who hand wash our clothes every day, and uh, men who would walk down to the river with a big bucket to carry water back to put them in, in the toilets so that we can have water to flush and to bathe ourselves. So we were very well cared for by the whole entire tri tribe. This is my friend, my young friend, Renzo. He's one of my favorite there. Renzo is five years old, and he's brilliant, and he has a knack for language. And what I love about him was he caught on very quickly, and he can listen to your, sto your conversation, and he'll catch up words, and he'll use it in most surprising way. The reason why I wanted to talk a little bit about him is um, this situation where if you fast forward and you see this picture here, you see that there, there's this man here that 
carries all these bags, and this is just a man on on the port. They, there are lots of men like this carrying pick up bags for all of us all the time, and I find my bags too difficult to carry up a lot of steep stairs, and these guys would just do it. So how this tie in with Renzo's story is when we were in the jungle. I created a game for them where we took a leaky air mattress that we we bought we brought along. It's no good to sleep on, but it was great as a a play toy. So we got buckets of water, we wet wet the thing down, and we soap it up, and then and then the kids get to slide on them, and it was slip and slide in the jungle. Super fun. They loved it, and one thing that we had to do was keep replenishing the water, and. The water bucket, I could barely carry it from the source out to where we were, and I turned around and Renzo was in there carrying out two buckets that was his size, and I saw the muscle in his shoulders bulged up, and I saw his whole body look just like these men who have built, you know, who have built themselves to carry big heavy loads. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, if he doesn't have the education that he needs. This is his future. He's gonna just be another carrier and lug another, you know, l l person that lug big heavy bags for us. And he's deprived of his full future. And he's so brilliant. It just breaks my heart to think of of it that way. This is my favorite. These are my two favorite location in the jungle, inside my my bed. Underneath the mosquito net, as you can see, I'm covered under a uh, bug repellent um, bed sheet, <laughs> bed sack, and mosquito net over me, so that I am not eaten alive when I'm in bed. It was so difficult to relax in the jungle because everywhere I turned, there was an opportunity to be eaten by some some animals, whether it's small, large, medium freaky you know anyway so that was my sanctuary the other part part that was awesome was this river this is the the amazon river and where they built this deck you could actually swim out here and this is where the children and the um, and the family go out and bathe what you don't see is that just around the corner from this location is where they wash their dishes and do all their laundry and the water gets all muddy there with soap and then a little beyond there a few steps away from that is where um, the toilets empty into uh, on my first day I was very opposed to swimming in the water but after five days of really heat and itchiness I was jumping in the in this river just like everyone else and never thought about how dirty the river was and after 15 days five ceremonies a thousand plus mosquito bites it was finally time to leave I was so happy but before we leave the Amazon River I want you to see a few more shots of this beautiful beautiful river it was so peaceful and so um, ser serene and vibrant and full of life and these are the on the last day where we took the the boat ride out. Everybody wanted to go, so we stuffed this boat filled with people so that they can have a a trip out to say goodbye to us. It was very very heartwarming. This is uh, Adriana and Huni, the shaman, on their last conversation through the misty jungle to the beautiful river. Back into Iquitos, we flew there to Lima and then to Cusco. Cusco is the nearest town to Machu Picchu. And Cusco is completely opposite from the Amazon. It's dry, it's cold, the Amazon was wet. Cusco is beautiful and well built. This is the plaza. There are, lot, there are lots of restaurants where you can sit where we are at so that you can see over the plaza and it's just stunning. This is also where you can buy all the baby apaca and, ya and llamas material you could ever, ever want. And Machu Picchu at her best. Stunning, stunning, sacred, amazing. Here's another shot of the same. I don't use as much effect as my boyfriend. That was his picture there. 
and this is all the, the, the normal Machu Picchu picture that you see. I like this angle a lot because on that tree it looks like there's a koala bear hanging on to it. Beyond Machu Picchu is Huayna Picchu, which is a mountain that is taller than Machu Picchu and you have to have a special pass that costs more money to go through and only 300 people can pass through that a day. We were one of the lucky 300. Maybe, maybe not. It took us six hours to, got, to get out of this jungle. It's usually a two to three hour hike. It took us six hours to find our way back out. We climbed stairs after stairs, crazy, crazy ladders, crazy step down and more steep, steep way so that we can have this view. This is the view of Machu Picchu from Huayna Picchu. Beautiful. I, this picture doesn't even capture it. And this is where you would want to meditate. So me and my Amazon woman self would like to invite you to the Amazon, invite you to check out ayahuasca and really give yourself a wonderful experience so that you can go both inside and outside to a whole new world.